good evening and good morning in America. I am joined with Brendan Hickey and Peter Brown of Distinct Properties of the Indonesian Spotted Tree Frog that has been nominated as a finalist in our comedy category at Bunding for Shorts 2021. How are you, Brendan and Peter? I'm good. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh, he's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> have to do one better, right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, for, the, for those watching that don't know uh, you, Brendan and Peter, do you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, sort of what your what your hobbies are, and how also you got into film, both of you. We like movies, right, Peter? Yeah, we we like movies. So what we else like do we music. like? We like we like do music sometimes too, but mostly movies now at this point. Uh, yeah, we uh, met each other in high school and started doing stuff back then. And I guess we've just kept doing it uh, despite yeah. despite people telling us, please stop, stop. We don't want any more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're just persevering. We're, we're, we're kind of survivors, but <laughs> that's what they tell. That's what they tell. Us. Um, yeah, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so we made we made this one right when the uh basically right after the pandemic hit both of us went back to seattle uh in the states to sort of be grounded for a little while uh and not do school and we sort of came to the idea of wanting to do a project in the meantime and um this one seemed like it would be a good contender because we could kind of shoot it off the grid and also the opportunity came up to do the 16 millimeter thing really cheaply which i we i think i know for sure i have and i think peter as well we would always wanted to do something on 16 millimeter and it's quite pricey usually um so sort of a just an opportunity came up to to do a movie on film and this again seemed like a really good contender for that because the aesthetic of of sort of the time and also in creating the weird atmosphere we thought would be really good with the film look. Yeah, because, you know, it would sort of, like, work well with, like, the texture of the film. Like, it would be enhanced by having that. But it's, I don't know, where do we... You wrote the first draft about school, right? Yeah, so so actually the, 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 the movie was originally supposed to be the pilot for a show or a longer thing. And then I think I talked to you saying, I think we should do this, change it into a short form. Would you mind helping me like adapt it into a short film? And that's sort of when you came on as, as co-writer uh, and we changed a lot of it and sort of the, the be, took on more of a, the more of the abstract qualities, abstract, I guess, <laughs> when, when we started, <laughs> Because we we decided that uh, it'd be a lot funnier if we also sort of took a more satirical approach to it as well. Mm. So for those that don't know what Distinct Properties is about, how would you describe it to our viewers? How would you sort of say what the film's about without obviously giving it away too much? You want to take this one? Yes. <laughs> to be fair, you could just end it there, and that would say enough. But... <laughs> no, it took us a while. We had a we have a hard time always describing our movies because they're we purposely are like we always try and think of something of like we want to make something where we want people to see it and, and say, "Oh, I've never seen that before." Um, which is great when they see it, but it's horrible when you're pitching it to them because you're like, "Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah." There's also just like a lot of like oh, wouldn't this be funny if... And then it all, like, sticks together. And it's not always, like, cohesive. Like, there's a lot of weird, like, contrast and, like, mismatch. But hmm. And so that makes it kind of difficult to explain. <laughs> I think it's one of those yeah. films that you have to watch to fully understand. Because I remember, sure. when, I remember when we first received the film from you guys and uh, we were watching it in a meeting. And I have to admit, I thought it was going to be a documentary. I had it in my mind it was going to be a documentary and then it just took the interest in turn and well the title's a little is a little uh i think <laughs> it's kind it of academic definitely, yeah it would definitely lead you down that path i think of and i, th I think the that's documentary. 
just an extra joke within that, that that probably wasn't even intentional but like it's just an extra joke which um fits in with the style so well i think the title too the whole point of the movie of of sort of making fun of the idea of plot like the idea that when his dad spoilers when something happens at the end that seems like it wraps up the whole plot in the in a matter of seconds basically saying that it's it's disheartening we thought it would be really funny if the title pretty much had nothing to do with the movie it was, <laughs> it was like a really it's a minute detail because i think it and and the quote at the beginning is another thing that sort of we were really worried people wouldn't get it and they think that we just didn't know what we were doing or didn't know how to make a film and so we wanted to as many places and we don't in many regards i want to stress that <laughs> uh, but i think we wanted to give as many clues to people as possible that uh oh there's there's more going on here if you if you look into it and and the title was a big one because uh it, it basically says don't take this at face value i think definitely i think Obviously, when we watch film, there's a lot of assumptions that people make before they watch it, as I just said, kind of. Um, I suppose, was that, is that a big part of filmmaking for you? Making the audience question what they question, I suppose. Peter? Yeah, I just, I don't know. It's always a weird, yeah, it's always a great experience to be confused. (laughs) <laughs> like I think <laughs> a lot of the time like to be confused or to not be able to really understand something is like really funny <laughs> and like I, I get a lot of humor from that and so there's like there's that aspect but also like I don't know because it's not really there's a lot of ideas in there it's not really pointing to one thing exactly but it gives people something to think about. <laughs> we talked a lot Even about art- we talked what? a lot about artifice too, and the idea. Like I know we've talked a number of times that, like I know it really frustrates me when movies pretend that they're not a movie, or when someone says something is real to life or feels true to life. It's like that. It, it is that, but at the same time, it kind of bothers me when a movie tries to like say to the audience, "I'm not a movie." you know, get invested in this. When, when in reality, I think my favorite movies that I've ever seen, and I think a lot of the movies that Peter and I have talked about that we, that we watch and really enjoy are movies that sort of take advantage of the fact that the, you're watching a movie, right? You, there's, there are things that are inherent, inherently artificial and, and fake in the medium, but that doesn't mean that the medium can't say something true with those things. Right. And sort of putting it in a thematic context in this one particular, you know, the, the end of the movie, what the what the real message is of is all this all this doesn't matter when you find somebody that you really have a connection with or, or you really are in love with, right? And and the fact that there's all this like crazy, weird, random stuff the whole time in the movie and that it just doesn't end up mattering to me that's what's really cool about movies in general is that you can use something that seems inherently so artificial and yet it can still, it can still feel like it's real or feel like it means something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, There's in making a movie, it's like capturing your representation of reality, but it doesn't have to be tied to what is in reality. (laughs) It can be your constructed reality and it can like communicate more through that. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a case of, your reality becomes the audience's reality for for that 10 minutes of the film in this case. So you mentioned briefly earlier that you shot this film in just after quarantine hit. That must have been quite a challenge. Um, so how, how, I suppose, did you have a different plan when you originally thought about shooting this? Or did you uh, face any big troubles when you were shooting it because of the quarantine situation? Yeah. Well, we, we just did another film, which had some older actors. So that was, that was a lot more difficult because we really had to, we had, we did COVID supervision on the first one, but this next, the second one, we really doubled down on because, you know, it was shot in the city. 
we had older actors. We really had to uh, plan it accordingly. The first one, part of the reason we wanted to do it is we did it with such a small crew and also just, we shot it sort of uh, like off the coast of Washington state. So like not directly in Seattle. So, so part of what was so appealing to do it is that we can kind of shoot it off the grid and shoot it with a really, with a really small pared down crew because it could sort of lean into the, the artificiality of, and, and the sort of low key production quality of it, uh, that it, that it seemed very much like a good contender for something to, to show, shoot during quarantine a, as for like, if how we initially planned on doing it, I, I don't know if we had initially or would have done it at all had, had COVID not happened because um, like we, the two of us, when we started thinking about the plot in general, we plotted out a lot more. And so I think this was always a project that we thought we could do if we, if we got a good, a good deal of money later on, you know, if we, if we moved on to more ambitious projects, I don't think there was ever really a plan to do it as, as one of these low budget shorts. Um, so, you know, yeah, I really think that we wouldn't have done it if it, if it weren't for the, if it weren't for the virus, um, which is, you know, one of the only good things about it is that we were able to, <laughs> to sort of, to make this as, as a byproduct of, of the circumstance, I guess. And I don't remember where we were at exactly in like phases of like lockdown in because we shot it in June. Mm-hmm. And so I think things had loosened a little bit to the point where we yeah. could do it. But I think everybody like we everybody stayed in like kind of a pot while we were shooting it. Like, yeah, we I de- were very I, conscious on set. Like we didn't run into any problems. I definitely felt that the, the, the film we did right after this was much more, you much more felt directly the presence of of the COVID situation. Did you feel that, Peter, that, that it, we were much more like conscious of yeah. it? And then also just that it- but I think it was just more, a larger production. Yeah, like, that's probably it. <laughs> just had more people in it. So to, and especially with- You don't like want to kill them. You don't want to yeah. kill the elderly. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, my bomber just started <laughs> dedicated to doing. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. Awesome. Um, so you guys both star in the film uh, Tree Frog as well. Um, was that mainly because of the situation or um, did you have as sort of director and producer that sort of clear vision in your head of how you wanted the characters of uh, Mochi and... I'm going to say... Guy. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> I knew I knew I'd get it wrong. <laughs> um, to be, what do you think? Why didn't we cast actual actors? Well, I thought it would be funny to see you do like Office Man things, and yeah. I think yeah, because you didn't want to do it. No, I I also think it's funny to see me like doing a job or like yeah, <laughs> like, like living as a man, <laughs> like in a yeah, trailer like, for a that is- <laughs> That is a funny fantasy, is me, like, having my own apartment or, like, being an adult. Um, I thought that would be funny. No, I I think also, like, we didn't trust anybody else to do the tone, I don't think, is the big thing. Or at least I didn't. I think at the end of the day, it came down to it'll be so much harder to try and show somebody how these lines, the cadence of them, it'd be so much harder to to do that than to just do it. So I think laziness is the big one, right? Like (laughs) it's just hard to direct actors and it's a lot easier to direct (laughs) yourself because you don't have to do as much work. I don't think. It wasn't (laughs) like, maybe (laughs) you weren't like, yeah, I'll do it. You (laughs) were just like, oh fuck, (laughs) let's just do it. (laughs) Like you just settled on it one day. I remember you was like, you you didn't want to do it, but yeah, I don't know. I think for, well, you wanted me to be Kyle, like before I was like doing anything else on it. And so I think that's how I ended up there. But honestly, like, I, yeah, I just thought it was like a tone thing. Mm, I think, I think the tone is, is so different and so interesting with different films. Um, um, and I suppose that the film, its style itself that you guys were mentioning, um, did that have a lot of inspirations from, uh, different directors is there anyone in particular that that style reflected or the or the tone of the film the born forlorn guy what's that guy's name 
Uh, I don't remember. Uh, oh, Aaron Beckham. Yeah. That, that guy. He's really good. I get really, you know, I'm not going to say angry because it's so, I understand why people say it, but like we try really hard to make the films really unique. And then every time people are just like Wes Anderson, Wes Anderson, you know, and we can't be mad about that because there are a lot of Wes Anderson parts in it, but it, it almost feels like, you know, I don't know if Wes Anderson would have a, a sleep paralysis demon and it feels a little bit like, you just watch the first like 20 seconds of the movie when you're stuck. Like, I don't know. I, I get it. I get why yeah. people say that it's Wes Anderson, -y, but at the same time, like we really do try and make them unique. So I it's think like some combination of color and like composition and like aesthetic texture, but <laughs> like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think once people sort of watch the rest of the film, they do get that more personalized flair to it, I suppose. Uh, sure. but with that, with the beach scene, um, I, yeah. I see why it's people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i no i can't be mad because it's just very overt and uh you know <laughs> i would say that too if i if i saw somebody make this movie but but aaron beckham is a short film director that we both really like and he does not uh, like his dialogue's a little more naturalistic but he definitely does some uh more like you know uh like mumblecore fantasy type stuff you know which is very much i think similar to what we what we do what we did here you know we talked about filthy frank like a lot <laughs> do you remember yeah. that oh we yeah like <laughs> he's a good director in, in inspiration too uh <laughs> visual style <laughs> i don't think you can get more different in terms of uh, yeah. <laughs> in some respects yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think that was another thing in all honesty about that is like the idea of like weird out there comedy, like when it's online, there's sort of a stigma of it can't look good. You know, like it either has to be this really out there weird stuff that is like online sketches or like really slick professional looking shorts. Mm. And I don't know if I necessarily buy into that. I think you can you can make you can realize really weird ideas and still put just as much effort into the look of the movie as, you know, the jokes or, or the premises of, of it. And uh, yeah. the director of photography that we work with a lot, Elliot, is very much of that mindset too, that comedy can look just as good as, you know, really slickly produced drama. It's just that people don't treat it as seriously. Um, yeah. And we definitely treat the look of the film really seriously almost to a fault more so than the other elements of the film that we should pay attention to um, so. <laughs> it has like a really i don't know it just has like a really like modern like nonsensical sensibility about it and you don't see that capture like in this look and in this style ever it's never presented like this and so that's what <laughs> that's why i say that it's because we would talk about it being like bougie filthy frank <laughs> like yeah. high like production value like that like a weird like art housey approach to it <laughs> yeah is, like if Dante frank spent like six months on a movie this would be, <laughs> this <is> <laughs> be it. <laughs> it would be his film but like <laughs> yeah yeah pretty much and i think um from those that have seen it and from our perspective here that we've all really enjoyed the style because the style is obviously 16 millimeter really cool in itself and then obviously fitting in with the with the whole storyline and everything is really effective uh how's the reception been for you guys from people that have seen it different film festivals all over the world what? um really good we were really surprised because we thought it was too out honestly i thought it was too out there because the first couple people i showed it to just in my immediate circles were like what are you what what <laughs> uh and then Elliot, the DP, put it on our filmmakers and like read it and everybody really liked it. And that was really surprising, uh, not just because it's pretty out there, but also just because we don't usually, you know, get that good a reception or, or that positive, like uh, not to say that people aren't supportive, but it, it definitely felt like this was a really big swing and people appreciated it more than some of the movies that we thought were safer bets that people probably 
would have on the surface level seemed to enjoy more, um, which is always really encouraging. And I, I always try and like really, you know, reach out to people who are doing, you know, out there stuff and say, I support it because when you hear that, when you hear people really respond to something that, that is maybe a little bit more out there, what it does is it encourages people to take more chances and to, to, to do things that are different and, and not safe. Um, so yeah, really supportive. And we just, we just started the festival circuit, but by that same you know, notion, uh, I've just been surprised, you know, like every festival that we've talked to and stuff, people have at the very least seemed to understand what we were trying to go for. Um, which, you know, that's all you can ask. And, and, uh, so yeah, it's been it's been great. I'm I'm really excited to see where else we can take it and and if people still respond to it positively. Hmm. Yeah. Does that then encourage you perhaps to make equally as out there projects in the future? Is there anything that you've been thinking about that goes oh oh I don't know if that's too much, but now knowing that obviously people do really like this style, uh, not just this style I suppose, but like like your inner thoughts i suppose <laughs> uh, yeah you can make a movie about anything you can do it <laughs> you can do anything if you can make it happen like on screen <laughs> so it's sort of just like a pass to like well maybe that's worth something we've been thinking a lot about uh, making something with a kaiju in it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, we want to do a big monster movie with like with a guy <laughs> in a suit though wouldn't that be awesome that'd be so good <laughs> yeah. I love it. that sounds great i'm sure we'll see that in the next couple of years <laughs> yeah and, but just and, like it's a pass like you can do anything like stylistically like in content like totally like hmm. if there's somebody who wants to see it <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah if you film something it's it's a movie you know i mean then it just becomes if people like it right so you know any any uh like especially now like with the, the amount that things can be super niche and you can make something and there's an it doesn't have to be broadly appearing appealing because you can find an audience online um like the the floodgates are totally open like you can really do anything and, and push the limits and and the last film we did uh is arguably like you know more out there and, and we'll see if if that people have the same reaction to it or if we need to sort of dial it down a little bit <laughs> i'm thinking we need to dial it down a little bit because i don't want to get institutionalized but uh <laughs> but you know yeah to answer your question which i kind of forget what it was but also i think it was does it encourage you to do more out there stuff, stuff. Yeah. yeah yes answers yes <laughs> <laughs> always <laughs> awesome um you guys mentioned that you've just wrapped up on a brand new film that you said perhaps more out there is there anything that you can give away or is this very much tightly under wraps for now oh it's <laughs> under wraps oh, oh i love the secrecy it's great no it's a, it's a horror movie and uh it takes place uh in the democratic people's republic of Abyssinia, which is like an eastern european country in like the 60s uh and they're they're in like a cold war with uh antarctica and uh wouldn't it be great if i was just making this up that's I mean, that's, how, <laughs> that's how films come about right <laughs> that's that's how I, that's the actual plot of the movie and yet that's how i feel pitching it to someone every time i feel like they think i'm making this up like a hundred percent i've never seen you explain it but it did sound like it was word for word <laughs> <laughs> uh no i have a really this one i have a really hard time explaining to people but that's the general gist of it is it's like a, a, a light horror light sci-fi stylistically similar to true frogs um in some regards movie that we the big sell for us is we were able to shoot it we, we wanted to prove that we could make something that looked as slick as other films that were in student film festivals too, you know, because tree frogs, it's definitely stylish, but it doesn't look like pro. So we, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to, we shot it on anamorphic and we, we really tried to, to make something sort of the antithesis in some ways, stylistically of tree frogs that, that looked mm -hmm. pretty slick. Um, and so look out for that. Definitely. I think, I think that sounds 
Awesome. Um, so what would you say for both of you guys then? What's the ultimate goal film-wise? If you could be anywhere you want to be, uh, direct with whoever you want to direct, or what? what's your goal? <laughs> Stunned silence. I love it. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's your goal? I don't know. Well, I don't know. I think just, I like... I like serialized things. I like serialized things a lot. Like, because mm. then you can explore a lot of things. So I don't know. I've, I've thought a lot about just like weird, <laughs> like TV, like some kind of adult swim type thing. <laughs> like, I don't know. That's what we were kind of talking about for this. Like if we got the, we were <laughs> for a second approached by an Australian streaming service about doing tree frogs as like a limited series for them. <laughs> and I would love to do something like that. Like just do things like that. But it's, I don't know like it's endless possibilities so you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, I but, think but, yeah. I'd, I'd like to do like indie indie films and probably act in other people's movies uh, like as a way of making money like because I think there's not the type of movies that we're making I don't know if there's a lot of money there uh, in, not in long form <laughs> <laughs> definitely not in long form Two hours of tree frogs would be terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody would pay money to watch that, except maybe Jake. Uh, you know, he'd watch it. Uh, yeah, I think like long form, long form narrative. But the big goal right now is just like make as many shorts as possible and keep submitting them to film festivals, and then either get lucky and get the ability to make bigger stuff or die. Or those are the two options. So I think that's sort of the, the long-term plan is one of those paths. Um, what about you? Are you a filmmaker, Jake? Or are you also trying uh, to? I've done a little bit. I, cool. I sort of, uh, I'm at school more than anything. Uh, a few years back, did media at A-level. Um, I'm actually a math student, which is completely oh, different. Um, so cool. Not, not I suppose mega sort of filmmakery anymore. But in terms of that, yeah, I suppose uh, sort of ended up in teaching probably. So very, very different to this. That's awesome. That sounds like you'll have actual money and and a career, <laughs> like a functional homeless. employment. <laughs> yeah, so something, something productive. Yeah, but it's it's nowhere near as fun as uh, making short films and making full feature films. I suppose that is true. Film yeah. filmmaking that is that the best part of it is it's it's really fun and it's something to do you know a lot of times you wake up and you're like but then when you're making a film you're like i have a purpose i have some i have a life you know <laughs> you know what's up yeah. and yeah. there's some weird combination usually shooting i don't know in the past for us has been some kind of incredibly stressful thing like every time like it's <laughs> like a really arduous process but like for this one like this was probably the most, I don't know, relaxed shoot we've done. And I don't know, this was, I think this was the one was the most fun to make, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that, yeah. Feeds, that feeds into the film itself as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I think definitely. it feels fun, right? Like that, that I think is for all the negatives that there, there might be, I think when you watch it, you're like, oh, they had a good time making it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> at least and i think that's definitely <laughs> built within the story as well definitely yeah you can feel it. <laughs> awesome then just to sort of finish up then guys where can people find tree frog and where can people find the rest of your guys's work i think it's the only one online right now because we get pretty self-conscious about older work uh but you Don't can find it you can find it on my website brendanhickeymovies.com you can find it on vimeo uh brendan lee hickey and you can find my address and to come up and ask me and i can show it to you on my laptop and i got some nice headphones in the mail the other day so i'll make you some tea so do that maybe wear a mask but besides that i'll let you in so amazing Thank you so much, guys. Really, really appreciate it.